Hi guys, I'm Megan Graham, and today I'm here to talk to you about exactly how and why Tony Robbins changed my life. So a little bit about me, I am a female business owner. I own a hair salon in Boston, Massachusetts on Newberry Street. It is a best of Boston hair salon, which is a very illustrious award to win. I also have created and launched my own successful beauty products. I became a WBFF fitness pro at the age of 40. I met the man of my dreams. And overall, no matter what is happening in my life, I live a very happy and fulfilled life. And so I wanted to come in today to talk to you about how I found Tony Robbins and why it made an extremely big change in my life. You might be looking at me and saying, why should I listen to this person? I don't know who she is. I don't know why this would make a difference for me, but something tells me that if you have made it this far and you're watching this video, there must be something more that you want out of life. And so I just wanted to take the time to share my story about how I discovered Tony Robbins and what a massive impact he has made in my life. Years ago, when I was starting out my career, I had graduated from college and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was an art major and it was just that sort of period in your life where you're searching for something significant and you just don't know where to go with your life as an adult. So my choice was actually that I decided to go back to hair school and become a hairstylist, but I knew I didn't just want to become any hairstylist, I wanted to be the best at what I did. So I went to hair school and I started out my career and the beginning of my career was extremely slow. So for those of you that don't know, you usually spend about two years as an apprentice before even going on the floor at some of the higher end hair salons. And when you do go on the floor, you don't usually have a client to your name. So it is a really, really tough way to start out a career. Now, the sad part of the story is that at the very same time that I was starting out my career and I was making, I think at the time I was making $6 an hour, keep in mind this was over 20 years ago, I lost my closest sibling. So my little brother died in an accident and everything in my life changed all at once. So there were implications beyond the loss of my brother. Of course I missed him, it was the, the most sad thing I've ever experienced. And I'm not telling you this to make you sad. So I was at my absolute rock bottom and I really couldn't imagine anything being any worse. I was living in a $700 a month studio apartment in Boston, the train connected to my apartment. So every time the train went by, it was incredibly loud. Um, there were cockroaches in my apartment. There were mice in my apartment. I mean, it was not a luxurious apartment. But at the same time, I wasn't making any money at my job. I was extremely sad and all I wanted to do was go home. So my family lived about two hours away and every single chance that I could get, I would pack up my car and go home and spend as much time with my family. And then I would come home and just really, I would say barely be making ends meet, but I'm not being honest if I, if I don't tell you that bill collectors were calling me. I wasn't making my rent. I had no money for groceries. I was poor. I mean, I, I really didn't have the money to do what I needed to do. And at that time, I think I was borrowing money from my mother who had just lost her son. So I wasn't really making things any better. And I remember, you know, just sitting there and feeling really, really sad and, and thinking, you know, I should just give up. I should pack up my apartment in Boston. I should quit my job and I'm just going to move home and I'm going to live with my mom because I just, I can't handle this and I, I don't think I can succeed and I don't think I can do this. And it, it was definitely the most rock bottom period I've ever hit in my entire life. Although I've had other difficult moments as well and I would be lying if I did not tell you that. But this moment in particular was one where I was about to give up on my dreams and I just didn't know what I could possibly do to make things better. One night I was out walking my dog and Picture this, on September 1st in Beacon Hill in Boston, all of the students, everybody moves. It's a huge moving day. And on that day, people put their trash on the street and sometimes there's some really usable stuff. So I was out there walking my dog, thinking about how I was just going to give up and go home. And I paused for a second because I saw this very big cassette set 
and it said Tony Robbins personal power. And for those of you that don't know who Tony Robbins is, some people think of him as a motivational guru. Um, I myself had seen him advertising on infomercials in the 90s, and he really talked about teaching you how to be happier, how to improve your life, how to make more money. I was always really fascinated by what he was saying, but I never had the money to invest in his product. So here I am on the street and I see his cassettes. I remember feeling embarrassed because it would have meant taking something off the trash, you know, carrying it home with me. And I think at the age of, I must have been 26, I felt embarrassed to do that. But I really wanted those cassettes. So I put them under my arm, I walked home, and I started listening to them the next morning. So I took out a notebook and I listened to them every single day and I did every single exercise on those cassettes. If there's ever been anything in my life that happened for a reason, it had to be that I found Tony Robbins cassettes on the street. Now, probably these days, it would be very unlikely that you would even find cassettes, but I found the cassettes and I listened to them and I made notes and I did the exercises. You know, I didn't have the journal that the cassettes would usually come with, but I just pulled out a white lined notebook. I did the exercises and the biggest thing that I got from that program was that I realized you can't change every single thing in your life. So if you've lost someone, if they have died, you can't change the fact that you, that that person is gone, that they've died. But I think you can change the meaning of what happened. You know, you can't change the meaning the second that someone dies. I don't think you can just see the bright side of things. That would be, that would be a little too much but you can look for the beauty in every single situation and you can also work to make everything in your life better around that situation so that at least you're not living in misery and squalor without any money because not having money only makes things worse. So money may not be the most important thing in the world, but when you don't have it, it becomes the most important thing in your life simply because a lack of being able to meet your everyday needs becomes a disaster. So as I listened to those cassettes, I learned a lot of valuable lessons and I started to really take action. So I didn't just listen and learn the information. I took several actions every single day and dedicated all of my free time to making my business better so that at the very least I could meet my financial demands and pay my bills and not be a complete failure. So that year I actually quadrupled my income. Now keep in mind, my income was very, very low, but I set actions for myself where I had a website made, I changed the way that I dressed, I started marketing myself, I learned about Google ads. Did that make the loss of my brother go away? Absolutely not. But it did give me a certain amount of comfort in knowing that I didn't have to give up my career, I could still make money, I didn't have to be a burden on my mom, and also that the power of deciding how I feel every single day and how I frame the situations of my life is all within my control. I've gone back to listening to Tony Robbins again and again in my life because that's not the only challenging situation I've ever had. I think that he's given me more motivation, more strength, more clarity than I probably if I had done 20 years in therapy. The things that he teaches you are incredible shortcuts for how to have a successful and happy life. And just listening to it is not going to change your life. But if you are willing to invest, to listen, and to actually do the things that you learn, it is unbelievable what you can change in your life. So listening to Tony Robbins was not only a one-time thing for me. It wasn't like I listened, I quadrupled my income, I took in that information and I never listened again. This is something that I've gone back to again and again in my life. And if I'm even having a bad day, I always make sure to put on his breakthrough app and I play 15 to 30 minutes of Tony Robbins speaking of getting me energized so that I can get into the right frame of mind. I don't think that motivation or a positive attitude is something that necessarily stays with us naturally. I think it's something that has to be cultivated. I think you have to work it at each and every single day because if you wanted to lock onto it, there would always be something in your life that would get you down. No one has this perfect life where nothing happens that upsets them, 
things are always happy. But if we cultivate it, we decide that regardless of what's happening in our lives, we are going to continue to work, continue to strive to meet our goals, and continue to be successful. I think if anything, this past few years has shown me that things aren't always easy, but I wouldn't necessarily change the challenges that have been thrown my way because they have increased my strength, they've increased my resolve, and I've realized that regardless of what happens, I am never going to give up. So a few years ago, as I was turning 40, my husband asked me what I wanted for my 40th birthday. And I think he expected me to say that I'd like to travel to a tropical island or take some fabulous vacation. And I said, you know, I would really like to travel to see Tony Robbins at Unleash the Power Within in person because he has made such a significant difference in my life. And I truly don't think I would have any of the things that I have today were it not for listening to those cassettes. I truly think that they were a lifesaver for me. So Jeff and I actually traveled to Dallas. We went to Unleash the Power Within, which was a really intense experience. And I'll be the first to tell you, I'm a sort of, no, I'm not even a sort of uptight person. I'm an uptight person. So it doesn't come naturally for me to jump around or dance or hug other people. And at first I really didn't understand why we were doing those things. But the takeaways that I took from being at Tony Robbins for, I want to say it was three or four days, were unbelievable. The biggest takeaway that I got from seeing Tony Robbins in person was a sense of gratefulness that was deeper than any gratefulness that I've ever experienced before. So he led us through this exercise where we practiced being grateful. And it was so moving emotionally, it was so amazing, and it's something that I do, especially if I'm not having a great day, to turn what I thought wasn't a great day into an amazing day. Because even when we think that there is a lack in our lives, we're really not thinking about what we have, we're focusing on what we don't have. And so at first, I practiced gratefulness daily when I left UPW, and at first I made it really easy things. You know, I was grateful for meeting my husband. I was grateful for my family, for my pets, for my business. But as I started concentrating on things that were really easy for me with gratefulness, I started to touch onto some more complex issues. And as I focused on the gratefulness of the complex issues, I then decided that it was a really transformative process. People had always told me that it was important to forgive, but I never really understood. How do you forgive? You can't just snap your fingers and forgive. There has to be some process that allows you to do that, right? It's not a natural thing. So as I practiced that gratefulness every single day, I decided to get a little bit more difficult a little bit more difficult and challenge myself every day with transforming how I thought of difficult situations in my life. And without going into too much detail, I had had a very difficult uh, relationship, if you will, or lack of relationship with my own dad. And there were real things that had happened, but you know, I really was stewing on them and not having a relationship with my father because I was so upset about those things. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to think about the things that I'm grateful for and what I appreciate with my dad. And I sat down and I thought about how he had challenged me, how he went from being a Marine to being a Delta pilot, um, the manners that he taught me, the, the fact that I'm petite but also scrappy because of my dad. And you know, one thing after another, I went through all of these extremely powerful things until I reached this point where I just thought about how I loved my dad. I couldn't get to that point before I truly thought about what I was grateful for. And I, I couldn't even imagine that I could have done that a year before. And I called my dad, and I think it had probably been five years since I had spoken to him. And I told him that I loved him. My dad started crying, and for the first time ever, he apologized for, for whatever had happened in our past. And I think the really beautiful thing was that it was genuine. And I just told him, I'm not upset about anything that happened anymore. I love you. You did your very best. I appreciate you. I wouldn't be on this earth without you. And I just wanted to tell you that you don't have to be perfect for me to love you. Without going into too much detail, because I think certain things are personal, and I, it would almost be disrespectful for him to say 
the things that had happened, I have a different relationship with my dad. I learned to change the meaning of difficult situations. For instance, the past two years has been incredibly challenging as a small business owner, but it's also made me have these incredibly clear realizations of what I want and what I don't want. So I could look at it as, oh my gosh, this stress has been terrible. How could this happen to me? Or I could say, wow, this is so amazing. I'm so glad that something so big happened so I could really realize what I want and what I don't want. I don't think that in my entire lifetime I would have come to that clarity without listening to Tony Robbins. And of course I had to sit down, I had to take the action to spend the time to have those realizations. But if you are looking for more, if you want to live your life with passion, if you want to get more out of your life, I can't suggest strongly enough to you that you just get one of Tony Robbins programs, you start listening and don't just, don't just go online and grab whatever is free. You truly need a program. You need to go through the entire thing to really get the idea. I think a lot of people will pull up his Ted talk and they'll think that's great. I listened to Tony Robbins. Why isn't my life different? Because you have to do more than that. So you have to take a massive action as Tony Robbins would say, and a massive action isn't listening to a 20 minute Ted talk or whatever a Ted talk is. Most people in life are alive, but they're not living. So they're going through the motions of their life and they have all of these opportunities, but they don't seize the moment and they don't live up to their potential. And do I think I live up to 100% of my potential? No, I'm sure I don't, but I live up to more than most people do because I'm not afraid I'm not afraid to fail on the way to succeeding. For me, not doing, not trying, not learning, that's failure. If I launch a new product and it doesn't become successful right away, it's not a failure, it's a learning experience. It's all how you frame things. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was just something that I really wanted to make. He has been such an incredible source of joy of wisdom is somebody that I've never shaken hands with, but has touched every single aspect of my life from my marriage to the way that I care for my pets, to the way that I communicate with my employees who are my team for how I source new products, for how I take action. So I hope that you find exactly the same wisdom and energy and perspective because life is beautiful and we should get the most out of it. I don't want to say that life is short because life is as long as you make it and you can fill a lot of things into one life. But I do hope that you'll take time to listen to Tony Robbins. And if you've ever thought about listening to him, please comment below and let me know. Have you listened to Tony Robbins before? Have you been thinking about listening to Tony Robbins? And is there something in your life that you feel like you need to change and you're having trouble getting the motive and getting the power to change it. It was so awesome talking to you guys today. I hope you stay healthy and stay beautiful and go after your goals.